All right, welcome back, folks. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us after that break. Before break, I made this bold and crazy claim that if you were to give yourself the love and respect that we talk about in your favorite love song, that thriving in the transition would be easier. I also made the very bold claim that I guarantee you'd be successful if you did. Now I want to do a little bit of analysis by way of introducing to you the top five love songs that if applied to ourselves during a transition would help us to thrive. Yeah, okay, I know I got to come up with shorter titles for these top five lists, but work with me. I, I'm doing all that I can. I just want it to be clear. As a master trainer, you need to be with me on this. If I wasn't clear in how I named this thing, you'd have no idea what I'm talking about. So we're talking about the top five love songs that if applied to ourselves during a transition would help us to thrive. You ready for this? This is going to be fun. I've been looking forward to this for a couple of days. Here we go. We're going to start with number five. Number five, I got to go with my guy, Brian Adams. I'm a child of the 80s. You haven't lived until you really listen to the lyrics of Everything I Can Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams. So that's my number five pick. If we did what was in this song for ourselves, if we believed about ourselves this way, oh my gosh. If everything we did was for ourselves and for our health, our well-being, our progress, our development as people, we would just be on a planet of unstoppable people. I wish I could play the clip. I don't own the rights, and I'm not going to go that route. But like the song of Su Sin, I'm going to give you the lyrics here and highlight a few that just jumped out at me. So we're talking about number five, Everything I Do, for, Everything I, do I Do For You by Brian Adams. Look into my eyes. You will see what you mean to me. Search your heart. Search your soul. And when you find me there, you'll search no more. I, I should just stop right there. That first verse says it all. Look into your heart. You'll see what you mean to me. How many of us have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation? How many of us know what we mean to ourselves, our impact on us and those around us? Then he goes on to say, search your heart, search your soul. When you find me there, you'll search no more. Oh my gosh, how many of you know someone that's taken a sabbatical or a year off or a month off or whatever, traveled the world to find themselves, right? People do that in order to gain more peace, to gain more alignment, to understand where they want to go in life. Here, Brian Adams is suggesting that in the first verse, when you find me there, you'll search no more. I contend if you found yourself, your passion, your purpose, the mark you wanted to make in life, you wouldn't have to search for anything. You wouldn't have to go anywhere. You would just need to do what you do. Thrive in the transition. But the song's not done. Again, that's the first verse. Don't tell me it's not worth trying for. You can't tell me it's not worth dying for. You know it's true. Everything I do, I do for you. It is absolutely worth it. You have to go for it. You can't be complacent. You can't sit around and hope that something's going to happen. Try for it. Die for it. Give it your all. You know it's true. Brilliant. I want to highlight the third verse. We're, again, there, there are a couple more verses here, and I'm not going to go through all of them. Just want to point out some other things. Look into your heart. You will find... There's nothing there to hide. Take me as I am. Take my life. I would give it all. I would sacrifice. That's power right there. If you decide on a destination, if you set a goal, if you determine your purpose and give it all you've got, you can't not be successful. Yes, there's sacrifice involved. Yes, you have to work for it. Yes, you have to put in the effort. But what Brian suggests is that it's all worth it. And then there's nothing left to hide because you are expressing yourself 
in full. There's no question. There's no deception. There's no inauthenticity. You are you and you don't care that you are you. And as a result, you're going to go out and kill it. Follow me here. Just incredibly powerful. There are only a couple verses left, so I'll, I'll go ahead and finish it for this song. Um, don't tell me it's not worth fighting for. Uh, I can't help it. There's nothing I want more. You know it's true, everything I do for you. And then the chorus, I think, there's no love like your love and no other could have more love. There's nowhere unless you're there all the time, all the way. Yeah, that was part of the verse, not me ad-libbing. How powerful is that? And I'm super excited. This is number five. We've got four more of these things to go through. How can you not just on the most superior level thrive in a transition if you gave yourself the kind of love that Brian Adams is talking about in the song, everything I do, I do it for you. So number five. What I love, and I, I love a lot about this song, but what I love about the song as related to self, this is the type of dedication that is pretty much unheard of, not only for self, but even other people, right? Look, don't get me wrong. This doesn't really even apply to people because no one loves this hard and this strong that we, what Brian Adams is talking about. But what if you did it for yourself? What if everything that you did, you did it for you? Even in doubt, we bring ourselves back from the edge. Don't tell me it's not worth fighting for. I need to do this. That's going to get me to the next level. That's going to get me the next great relationship. That's going to get me the next great job. That's going to give me the motivation to continue to move forward. That's going to restore safety for me. What could you do if you loved yourself this much? Think about it. Wherever you clicked on this podcast, answer that question for me. What could you do if you loved yourself this much? Find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on wherever. Let me know. I want you to answer that question for me. What could you do if you loved yourself this much? The way that Brian Adams is talking about. All right. We got more show to go. We got more songs to go. That was just number five. We're up to number four, folks. We're up to number four. I went with the classic, or what I consider a classic. My boy Harry Connick Jr., We Are In Love. I love the song. It's upbeat. It's kitschy. It's catchy. And it's Harry Connick Jr. How can you not like this song? But even more so, because we're flipping the context a little bit, now this is about you. In essence, you've dedicated this to yourself. Remember, we're talking about self-love here. We're in love by Harry Connick Jr. Here are the lyrics. I know you so well. I can tell by the sound of your voice if you're really in love with me. And you are. You are. You know I can't lie. If I say to you, baby, I love you, then baby, I love you. And I do. I do. Now, just right there. Talking about knowing self, being self-confident, even when we doubt, you know that you love yourself. There's that reassurance on that love that we have to have because sometimes life takes it out of us. Trials, tribulations, tests, um, errors, unexpectedness happens. This song covers all of that. Now, I'm going to skip a verse or two. One of the things I want to point out it's one of the last verses. It may be the last verse. Here we go. So when I kiss you goodnight, just sleep tight with the thought that you'll always be caught up in love with me. And you'll dream that the stars up above have the answer of whether we'll be or whether we won't be in love. Well, we are. Yes, we are. So powerful there. Even when you go to sleep, when you lay down at night to dream, you know that you love yourself and you're going to make it through. Then you're going to have these dreams that the stars up above are going to support. One of the things that I, I firmly believe is that the universe absolutely provides. You just have to put it out there. 
I love me some Paulo Coelho, right? Paulo Coelho, Brazilian author, The Alchemist, among other things. In the book, The Alchemist, he has this quote or the saying or this phrase for the main character in The Alchemist. Once you decide on a goal, once you decide on a destination, the universe will conspire to help you succeed. I believe that Harry Connick Jr. is capturing a little bit of that here. Just sleep tight with the thought that you'll always be caught up in love with me, and you'll dream that the stars up above have the answer of whether we'll be. To me, he's in essence saying, if you love yourself that much, the stars are going to help you. And when you dream about it, you're going to see dreams of your success. Whether we'll be whether we'll get what we want. Again, the context here, you've dedicated this song to yourself. This is a love song about you and for you. This one, again, speaks to self-knowledge, self-assurance. We know when we're on the right path, when we're on the wrong path, or when we're punishing ourselves or playing the victim. Harry, I think, gets that at that very first verse. I know you so well. I can tell by the sound of your voice if you're really in love with me. I, You know if you're faking it. You know if you're going through the motions. You know if you're self-sabotaging. You know if you're setting yourself up for failure. You know if you're not on mission, on task, not fulfilling your purpose. You know it. it's that thinking feeling in the pit of your stomach that lets you know. But yet, as humans, we've got this great gift that always works against us. We will start to rationalize stuff. We will start to make excuses for stuff. And my assertion, what Harry is doing, saying, no, that excuse is gone. Because I know you so well. I know myself. You know yourself. Again, this love song is about us. And if you're really in love with me, I know when you're faking it. I can tell by the sound of your voice. That's, I don't know what could be more powerful than that. And I hope that you pick up how excited I am talking about these songs right now. It is completely awesome. And I think there's a whole world of possibility if you were to love yourself as much as the object or the subject of your favorite love song. Again, there is no way you could or would give up in those thoughts or have, mis or have misgivings if this song was dedicated to you, how could you let yourself down with that confident self-assurance of how well you know yourself? That's why that one's number four. Harry Connick Jr., We're in Love, number four. We still got three of these to go, folks. Hang in with me. This, this is only going to get better. Now, some of you may be surprised by this. Most of you won't be. I'm the guy that contends that we've got more in common than we do in difference. That being said, love songs come in all flavors, shapes, sizes, and colors. And I'm hitting all the genres right now. A, a quick place to recap, right? Let's start at the beginning. Brian Adams, Everything I Do, I Do For You, number five. Harry Connick Jr., We're In Love, number four. Now we're going to number three. Number three, I Will Always Love You. By Dolly Parton. I did not go with the Whitney version. The Dolly Parton version, one, a different genre, but two, I think the Dolly version is a little more sad than the Whitney version. Yes, we can debate that all day, and that's not what I want to debate. It's the lyrics that I want to share with you. If you love yourself as much as Dolly describes in I Will Always Love You, Talk about being wrapped in a warm blanket of comfort, knowing that you're always going to love yourself, knowing that you will never let yourself down. Let me get into the lyrics here, because I could talk and talk and get all convoluted and distort things, and that's not my intent. My intent is to show, demonstrate, illustrate, bring to you factual examples that we've got more in common than we do in difference. I will always love you. Dolly Parton, if I should stay, I would only be in your way. And so I'll go, 
but I know I'll think of you every step of the way and I'll always love you. I'll always love you. Now, on the surface, right? Oh, oh my gosh, there's conflict, there's turmoil. How can you be in your own way? Really, people, you've never gotten in your own way when you tried to get something, when you tried to do something? Of course you have. You're human. That's what we do. This song acknowledges that. Saying, hey, I'm going to get in your way. So I'm going to get out of your way so you can be great. But no, I'm not abandoning, abandoning you. Abandoning, just a really hard word to say right now for some odd reason. But know that I'm not abandoning you. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. There's still that reassurance. There's that acknowledgement that we're humans, that we're real, that we get in our own way. And that's right off the bat. To continue, bittersweet memories, that's all I'm taking with me. Goodbye, please don't cry, because we both know that I'm not what you need. I will always love you. I will always love you. Again, loving yourself enough to get out of your own way, to know and acknowledge what's not right for you, to know also that you're not alone and that you've got these memories. They're bittersweet because, hey, that thing that was comfortable, that thing that kept us in place, that thing that kept us from making progress was comfortable, but I'm going to allow you to move forward. I'm going to allow you to be successful, create what you want and what you need. To me, that's where those bittersweet memories come in. Then Dolly really brings it home and says, I hope life treats you kind. I hope that you have all that you've ever dreamed of. I wish you joy and I wish you happiness. But above all this, I wish you love. And even right now, as I just read these lyrics, Whitney's jumping in my head and this is her big, big crescendo. This isn't about Whitney. This is about Dolly. I'm going to read this one again. I hope life treats you kind. I hope that you have all that you ever dreamed of. I wish you joy and I wish you happiness. But above all this, I wish you love. Dolly can just drop the mic as far as I'm concerned. Because when it comes to self-love, loving yourself, caring enough to do what's best for you, that's it. On the surface, if you look at the song as a whole, it seems like it's a breakup song, right? If it were a couple and someone dedicating it to someone external, you're breaking up, I'm leaving you alone. However, with this context that we're talking about, it being sung to you by you, I find it so incredibly empowering. All those well wishes and the understanding that we can be the biggest barriers to having what we want in our life. That last line, but above all this, I wish you love. Damn, how amazing is that? How often do you have this wish for yourself? What would you be able to accomplish if you had the support that Dolly's talking about in this song, what if you were your own object of this song? Life treating you kind, having all you ever dreamed of, but above all this, I wish you love. There's that breath again. You know it had to come back this episode. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of love you need. That's the kind of self-love you need to thrive in the transition. No matter what's thrown at you, no matter what obstacles, no matter when you think you are the victim, you've got everything you've dreamed of. You've got nothing but the best wishes, the most well intentions, happiness. But above all this, as great as that stuff is, Above all the awesome stuff that we don't get anyway, I still wish you love. Oh my gosh. Capital OMG, three exclamation points, two snaps, and a circle. That's how cool this one is. It's still just number three on my list. That's what I'm talking about. If you made the 
best love song, your favorite love song be about you, what could you do? What that what would that mean in your life? I think it means you would absolutely thrive in the transition. I think you would crush anything you set your mind to because most of us don't have this kind of love, this kind of support, this kind of good intentions, this kind of understanding, this kind of appreciation. With that being said, you deserve to have that for yourself. It doesn't have to be given to you. You just have to take it for yourself. It's my story. I'm sticking to it. Stay in there with us, folks. We're moving on to number two. I'm not going to throw in a cheesy commercial break here. I've got to get you to number one, right? After those three, Brian Adams, Harry Connick Jr., and Dolly Parton, I'm about to hit you with the good stuff. Number two in my top five list of if this song were about you from you, you'd kill your transition. Number two, Cause I Love You by Lenny Williams. Now, some of you may have just paused, like I have no clue what the song is, who this is, what is Will talking about with this one? Look it up, stream it, Google it, look at the lyrics, go to Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you choose to listen to music. For some of you old school heads, go to the vinyl. I know you've got this on vinyl. Pull it out, listen to it. Look it up on YouTube. 90s babies, look it up on your daddy CDs, what, whatever the case may be, you need to hear the song. I've got to give this a, a little preface before I read the lyrics to you, because the lyrics won't make a lot of sense, right? Because there's some repeated letters, a bunch of sounds, some grunting. Lenny just gives his self to this song. He puts it all on the table, on the stage, the studio, wherever it was recorded. It's just raw with emotion. It's raw with passion. My assertion, it is raw with truth. Because again, we're coming from the context that if you loved yourself as much as Lenny's talking about in the song, there's nothing you could do or nothing you couldn't do is really what I say. If you did what Lenny's talked about in the song, there is zero that you could not do. All right, here we go. Number two, because I love you, Lenny Williams. Girl, you know, I, 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 I love you no matter what you do. And I hope you understand me. Every word I say is true because I love you. Baby, I'm thinking of you, trying to be more of a man for you. And I don't have much of riches, but we going to see it through because I love you. And now Lenny just gets all emotional. And he's got a bunch of O, 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 O's. And I can't sing, so I'm, I'm not going to try and do that. But he comes back to say, some men need lots of women for their passions to fill. But I want only you, girl. If it's in, if it's in, if it's in God's will, because I, because I love you. And again, now when he starts repeating stuff, I, I love you, baby, with all my heart and soul. Oh, 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 oh. And he goes on with the O's. There's like 17 O's here. And he gets to this point where he has a conversation. He's reminiscing. Of, and I'm paraphrasing now. Uh, because, again, it's hard to read. This is a song that you have to listen to. Whatever you need to do to listen to this song. Number two, Because I Love You by Lenny Williams. Listen to it. Look it up right now. I'm Pause this podcast. Come back to it after you listen to Lenny Williams' song. And things will make much more sense. Then we'll pick up and continue. Do what you need to do. What I, again, just love, love, love about this song, what most people love about it is his passion. His just raw emotion. Man, if Lenny Williams, if you, again, haven't heard the song, do what you need to do. All the feels. All the feels are in the song. All those things that you feel when you're full of self-doubt, when you're ready to betray yourself, when you're ready to skip out on your commitments, think of Lenny and how much you mean to you. I guarantee you won't let yourself down. You won't skip out on those goals. You hear this song and you know 
that this ish is real. And I said ish, I-S-H. I didn't say the other word. We run a clean, respectable podcast here. But Lenny just brings out that passion all with this new context that I want you to have of this being to you from you. Your favorite love song being about self-love and how you take care of yourself. I, I, I don't know if I have any more words. I'm going to pull them together because I'm, I'm going to get through this podcast. That was number two. Now I'm going to hit you. I'm, I'm going to just pop you in the face with the number one song that if it were about you from you and you had this much self-love, you would thrive in the transition. Number one, Through the Fire by Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan in the house. This song right here, ladies and gentlemen, this song, just powerful by itself, emotional by itself, in the context of it being about someone else, to someone else, for someone else. Now we're flipping the script. When it's about you, from you, for you, in support of you, whole new meaning. Whole new meaning. Listen to these. I look in your eyes and I can see we've loved so dangerously. You're not trusting your heart to anyone. You tell me you're going to play it smart. We're through before we start. But I believe that we've only just begun. When it's this good, there's no saying no. I want you so I'm ready to go through the fire, to the limit, to the wall, for a chance to be with you, I'd gladly risk it all. Through the fire, through whatever come what may, for a chance at loving you, I'd take it all the way, right down to the wire, even through the fire. You just get chills? I, I just got chills. Thinking... If this were about me from me, I'm going to record 17 podcasts tonight. I'm going to be number one on everybody's playlist, more downloads than your favorite seven podcasters. That's what this means to me when I think about what if it were for me. What's it mean if it were about you? Right? There's so much in the song. And I, I'm not even going to try and read the rest of the lyrics. I'll let you do it yourself. They're just that amazing, right? It talks about taking risks, talk about acknowledging limits, talks about knowing yourself, all these great things that we deal with that are so powerful, that stop us, that prevent us from moving forward, we too readily accept them. Shaka's not letting you do that, right? I look into your eyes. Can you honestly look in the mirror and say, you know what? Hey, self, today I'm going to let me down. Most people can't do that, even jokingly. Shock is acknowledging that. If you look yourself in the eyes, you're going to see that that love is so dangerous. Meaning, my translation, if you do love yourself that much, it is dangerous for the rest of the world because you're a person that can't be stopped at that point. She also acknowledges that what could stop you is that you don't trust your heart to anyone. Key word, anyone, not even yourself. So what if you did? That's that danger again that she alluded to earlier. You tell me you're going to play it smart. Oh my gosh, how many people in times of change, in times of transition, job hunting, relationship hunting, starting over, whatever you call it. Well, I'm just going to play it smart. I'm going to go for the sure thing. I'm going to make sure I do it right this time. It's not about playing it smart if you're not true to yourself. If you do that, we're through before we start. But I believe that we've only just begun. What? did You heard that, right? I didn't stutter. There weren't ums and uhs. You tell me you're going to play it smart. We're through before we start, but I believe we've only just begun. How many folks have ever said, I'm done, that's it, I give up, can't do it anymore? You're done before you even started. You've only just begun. 
It's not about playing it smart. It's about loving yourself enough to go through the fire, to the limit, to the wall, for a chance to be with you, risk it all. If you can embrace all of you, if you could be a thousand percent your whole self, what would you do? What difference would that make in your life, the lives of everyone that you encounter, the folks that you talk to? My contention, my assertion, my belief, we know what that's like because we've experienced those people. Those people that come into a room and you don't know why you're looking at them or why they have your attention, but they do. It's because they've gone through the fire. They've had that conversation with themselves. They've, they've looked themselves in the mirror. They've been to the wall. Come whatever, come what may, they took that chance and they loved themselves. That's what you're seeing. That's what's reflected. That's what you feel when those people enter the room. Now, let's take it a step further. You know even more because you've had conversations with these people. Conversations where you think you have your stuff together and you leave, you're like, I want what they have. How'd they do that? Those are your mentors. Those are your sponsors. Those are your consultants. Those are your coaches. Those are your folks of counsel. Because they love themselves so much. They gladly risk it all. Right down to the wire, even through the fire. That's that power. That's how you blow your transition out of the water. If you love yourself this much, the way that Shaka Khan talks about, is there any question that this was my number one here? Just completely, completely, completely amazing. I'm even going to use a term that I don't use because it sounds stupid, but I think in this context, talking about Shaka Khan, I don't think it's, you're going to call me out on it at all. Life would be amazeballs. Yeah, I said it, um, amazeballs. I'm kind of regretting it now, but it's already done. It would be so amazing to have this much power, this much self-confidence, this much insight into yourself, this much support, knowing that even through the fire, you can do anything. Knowing that even through the fire, you are going to be okay. Whatever come what may, whatever come what may, you can handle it. You can do it. That's what I wish for you. That's what I want you to have. That's what I hope that I instill with this podcast and upcoming episodes of this podcast. That kind of self-love, that kind of respect for yourself, that kind of forgiveness for yourself, where there's not even a question if you can do it. Because that's what stops us. I don't know if I can do it. This is hard. I've not done it before. It doesn't matter. Because you love yourself. All right, that was my top five songs that if they were to you, about you, from you, you would kill the transition that you're in.